channel, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. And if you're new and checking out our channel for the first time, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store finds and we make them over and we share the process with you, how we make these items over to get them to resell. And we resell them here locally. We have a couple retail booths at a local antique mall. So in today's video, I am in need of restock. So we just finished the holiday season. Um, you just never can predict what's going to be selling or what you're going to be able to thrift. So I kind of went in and took inventory. We were doing a year end inventory, seeing what we had left and what we needed. So I was kind of scavenging around our workshop to see what quick flips I had that I could make over and get them done in a day or so and get them into our retail booth. So this is what today's video is all about. We're giving you a little bit of tour of our booth, the, the yeah, what it looked like after the Christmas season and how we redid it, made some items over and got them back into the booth. Here's a quick little tour of how our booths both fared during the holiday season. Nope, did not sell out all of our Christmas stuff, but definitely need to revamp, retake inventory, see what's left at the end of the year, move things around, see what I need to bring in and just see what has been there probably longer than I would like it to and mark it down. So I'd already right before Christmas put our Christmas items 50% off to see if I could sell any more. And then I have a couple pieces of furniture that have just kind of been sitting for a while. So I marked them 25% off trying to see if I could get those to move or not. But Chris is helping me take inventory trying to see what we have left going by our tag numbers and the stock number to see how long the item has been sitting there. Definitely would like to, it looks like I need some wall decor and then I need to move all my Christmas 50% off into another area and still give it another week or so to see if I sell anything. Now I'm going to mark down some of my pieces of furniture because I have some other finished pieces that are just waiting in our shop and we only have so much room, which yes, I don't want to do, but how long do you let it sit until somebody buys it? I made up some bigger tags for the furniture pieces, hoping that that would draw somebody's attention in once they saw the price. Then I moved everything that was Christmassy items over to these shelves. I figure I will give it one more week and then whatever doesn't sell, I will bring home. Let it assess what I need to bring back into the booth. I'm a visual person. I have to actually see the space. Now, there are a few items that I have brought home that have been sitting there for a while. Now, that price tag was in the... 1000 stock and we're going into the 5000 stock numbers right now so i know that it's time to redo this window just taking off the vinyl and then i never was really happy with exactly how this sunflower turned out i think i can do it a little bit better so i'm going to make over these two pieces a lot of this video is making over what i already have do you all do that? If it doesn't sell, do you bring it home and just tweak it a little bit? Try to make it into something that you know sells a little bit better. Luckily on this one, all I'm going to do is just put some window cleaner on here. Just get that all wet and then just take my scraping tool and take all this vinyl off. Though I thought it was super cute and when I did it, you just never know. Never found that right person. But I know one thing that sells <laughs> is... All the time when I put it on, it may seem repel repetitive, is the old farmhouse. Yep, just farmhouse in our area is wording that sells. So, yep, bye-bye little sparrow, bed and breakfast, let's make you into the old farmhouse. Getting the window all cleaned and our measurements of what it was sender. Yep, I just went to my Cricut. I just Cricut it out on permanent vinyl. The old farmhouse and what font I thought would look nice. And yep, now Chris is just helping me attach it to the window. The biggest part is always trying to make sure that you're center and level. And I like to use masking tape as a guide because vinyl is not very forgiving once it gets stuck. You always have to recut it if you got it crooked or it's half on, half off. The 
that we have that window all redone, now I'm going to go ahead and work on this. I love the I love the color of these baskets. I love the one, two, and three. And I know that if I just put that same, the old farmhouse saying on this, that somebody will be very happy with it. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to sand off what was on there first and get it repainted. So now that I have it all sanded, it's going to get a fresh paint job. And luckily we're in the process of painting a furniture piece when I'm doing this. So this was the perfect opportunity that I don't have to hand paint these. We already had the sprayer hooked up. It's all painted with two coats of paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and sand it one more time. <laughs> well, probably not the last time, but yes, going to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And I want some of that black of the undercoat to come through on the edges. So just using that old farmhouse again, I had the had this already up on my Cricut, so I just changed out what font and then sized it appropriate to this piece. So I'm always very much a creature of habit. I always go for that black apple barrel paint and just stenciling it on. I prefer when I'm doing wood to do paint on wood I don't what do you all do do you like do you like vinyl on wood or are you like me you like paint on wood now the of course for the glass I was going to do vinyl on vinyl on the glass but when it comes to wood pieces for some reason I just always like to do the paint and now I always like to heat up my vinyl because I do use the Oracle 651, the permanent vinyl. I, it's multi-use for me because I can go from wood, I can go from the glass, and I can go from fabric, and it all works. So I only have to have one vinyl on hand, and I just buy it in bulk. But when it comes to taking it off on wood pieces, I need to heat it up to release that sticky so it doesn't pull off my tape. Well, I did have two areas that apparently I didn't heat up enough with a blow dryer and they did pull a little bit of the paint off but I'm not going to stress about that it's going to be that perfectly imperfect the piece itself I wanted it to be distressed I'm going back in any way and distressing those letters I don't want them to be that crisp black I like a little bit of age to my stencil lettering so yep it's just going to be one of those perfectly imperfects now I also have this piece that I did and it was just a piece of decorative molding but nobody wanted it plain so the same thing I just went in with my Cricut changed the font and the lettering and went ahead and yep I'm going to add the same wording which is going to seem repetitive but like I said it is a wording that usually sells for us Now to make a few more wall decor pieces, I don't do a lot of signs in our booth only because Hobby Lobby, a lot of people just seem to buy it from them. So I don't, I know here on my channel, you will not see me probably bake too many signs, but yep, I need some wall fillers or unfortunately windows take a lot of time for me to prep and clean so I'm using what I have to make some signage to hang up on our wall so these are just these random pe round pieces that my husband Chris gets at his work and I've made signs out of them before so I'm going to go ahead and get these sanded up get these painted up and make up some signs or <laughs> until I can get some windows finished um, just some regular windows my whole booth will just be mirrors because that's all I have left in my inventory. Luckily the Cricut makes it pretty easy to do a round sign as long as you can figure out what your circle is. So yep it just has this curve feature you just type out what lettering that you want what you want it to say and then yes it just curves it for you. So I definitely I go to on my Cricut to be able to curve it. So I just go up and I look on Pinterest for some old signs um, yeah, just trying to come it up with something that's a little bit original. So this is what I'm going to do. But now to get it to fit on my 12 by 24 mat, I have to kind of, yeah, I have to rearrange everything so it fits. So I only had, can cut on that one piece of vinyl and be able to use it all as a stencil. Now to get it to stay where I want it to be, I need to group this all together and then I need to attach it. So when I go, it goes to cut it, it's all in the way that I need it to cut out. I did have to tweak it just a little bit. It was a little longer than the 24 mat that way. So yep, this is what it ended up looking like. <laughs> a little bit of a hot mess. 
but you can see how it curved. I, I guess I didn't hit my camera. How much can you watch me stenciling? So yep, I just attached it on and now I'm adding just a little bit of a barn on the top to fit in with that red barn. On take number two, I can show you how. So yep, this is how it came out. I have the second one that I'm going to do, so I'm just going to cut around my wording. And I like to cut close on my vinyl to my lettering, so it just helps me visually be able to center it. And always hoping that I got that right curve of what I was putting it on. But, you know, this is that perfectly imperfect. It's the homemade item, so I don't necessarily want it to be factory machine perfect i like that it's a little off center i like that a letter might go out over a little bit especially when it comes to whatever these pieces of wood came off i'm sure it was some type of a wiring or cording or something but i definitely love the uniqueness of these signs after sanding all my signs after even after i got the lettering in i just like to distress that lettering a little bit i'm going to seal them in with just a clear coat of matte I was looking through our hoards trying to see if I had anything else I could put together as some wall decor on a quick one day, let's get this done kind of thing. I have this, this is um, beadboard that we had framed. It was just in a wooden frame. I had a wreath on it, but we redid Chris's bathroom and we kept the wreath, but I got rid of the frame. frame. So this is a perfect opportunity here. Yep, we got the sprayer going. So let's this get this sprayed up and redo this piece. My plan for this piece, I'm going to go in with the sander. I want this frame to distress. Yeah, I didn't want it black underneath. I want that brown to pop through. So now I want to add this to the beadboard. I just absolutely love this galvanized gather that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then I'm going to do up this wreath in a Waverly antiquing wax to match the brown of that frame. So now I just need to make sure that I have some center points. I'm just going to be using some E6000 and some hot glue to glue this down. Beadboard is not thick enough to really put a braid nail or anything in, so glue is my best option. But I want to make sure once I got that glue on and that hot glue, I knew exactly where I was going to be placing this. So now I'm just going to go ahead and press firmly, giving it a few seconds to make sure that that hot glue is good and adhered but the nice thing is this is a nice flat surface to get to work with when it comes to the gather sign i'm gonna probably do it a little bit higher not quite center only because i want a piece of that h to be touching a little bit of the the wreath that way over time it doesn't bow in Another thing that I thought our booth was missing, I haven't had a lot of cutting boards in our booth for a while, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to add some wood. And yes, I have really done well this, <laughs> almost made it to the end of the year working down my stash. So now when I'm looking at cutting boards, uh, which you, sometimes you can find a lot of at the thrift store, I do pass a lot of them by. Sometimes I make risers out of them, but these I wanted to refinish. I like the uniqueness of the shapes or the uniqueness that it had different species of wood or like this one that had this metal feature on the top. So I'm wondering if anybody that resells or has a booth or anything like that, do you pick up and refinish cutting boards? The biggest thing I find with cutting boards is just the sanding time. If you have time to take for the sanding. Now we did just finally get a different sander that has a vacuum system. So hallelujah, this is going to make this job a little bit more cleaner. But yes, a lot of it is just about sanding all the cut marks, any watermarks, anything like that off of all these cutting boards. I absolutely love the different species of wood. I love to see the graining of wood. I guess I, I you would think somebody who paints furniture doesn't love wood, but oh yes, I do. If you're all thinking, why didn't I just take the tags off and resell this one and put it in the booth? Well, it has a water ring on it, so it needed to be sanded also. Then I'm going to go ahead and take off the string. I will sell it as is, but I will not put a string back on there because I know some people think of it as a hanging thing, but like this one, I wouldn't want that to get wet because you can tell like on this pig one, somebody definitely used it. Sometimes they are decorative, but sometimes people do use them. And oh, this cutting board with all this different species of wood. Oh my gosh. I, I probably enjoy this maybe sometimes more than Chris does when I get to sanding and seeing just that wood be brought back to life.
I always start off with 80 grit sandpaper that gets all those the cut marks, the scratch marks, any dents or anything out of there. And that will leave the grain of the wood all raised. So then I go back in with 120 sandpaper and make sure that I smooth it out. That I have them all sanded. I wipe them down with just a wet rag. I don't want to soak them. Now I'm just waiting for them to dry and then I'll get them reconditioned with some cutting board oil. When I picked up this four set of cutting boards, I liked the uniqueness that there was a four set and it had a holder. And it wasn't until I got the, all that yuckiness <laughs> sanded off that, oh my gosh, look at the tight grain on this wood. <laughs> And though you may be getting tired of the cutting boards, okay, one more, just one more. I just have to show you what the oil is going to do to this multi-species. Oh my goodness, look at that. So these are some of the jars that I have. I know I'm flopping all over this video, but I'm getting just some basics in our booth. And I had a whole bunch of these jars already made up. These are from the Dollar General store. I went through and probably bought way too many, but I had already painted all their lids. They were a normal brown lid. And then I set them off to the side, seeing what was going to be the best sellers. What were the people shopping in our mall in my booth what kind of labeling were they looking for so at first i had done a flour a sugar a tea a coffee um and those sets sold but it was always hard to find you know four of the similar containers i could find big ones i could find little ones um, the labeling sometimes didn't always work out the way that I was looking for, but the one thing that has, has been my best seller of these is just a coffee, some pl place to put your coffee, I guess, is this Blackbird that I, I bought a da digital download off of Etsy and I can size it appropriate to whichever one of the jars I have. As soon as I usually put one in, it is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and make up four more to have in uh, my inventory. And like I said, I have quite a few in my stash that I already have made up, but I just kind of wait to see which ones are selling. Do I need to make up more of the canister sets or more of these Blackbird ones? So as you see, just to add the labels, I just put Mod Podge on the back of it. Then I go ahead and press that down and then I let that completely dry overnight. And then the next morning I'll go in and I'll put another layer of Mod Podge over to protect that paper. So I do have one more little that had gotten tucked away with the cutting boards, just this little cookbook holder. So I'm like, oh, okay, so what can I do to this to make this one a quick flip um, to get it into our booth? I want to leave most of that wood. So of course, if you're regular to my channel, yep, I'm going to add a couple green sack stripes to it. I know I have many tutorials of doing green sack striping. So this is just a quick little version of just doing a couple simple white stripes. I wanted to make sure that my paint was good and dry. Now I'm applying a regular piece of masking tape. The first, the paint stripe was a half inch one. So you can see that little bit of overlay where there's going to be an unpainted in between the next stripe. And then I just eyeball what size appropriate I want to the item that I'm doing and going down and doing one more stripe. Like I said, this is just going to be some simple striping. Oh, instead of staging the pieces on shelves in our workshop or in my home, I thought I would just stage them right where they needed to be in our retail booth.
Hope that you enjoyed today's video. Yes, sometimes things don't sell, so I bring them home. If I think, ah, you know, if I have another vision for them, I will bring them home and I'm like, okay, let's just transfer this. This isn't too, too terribly hard to do. You just never know that right person wasn't coming along. So in the time frame, I don't even know what the time frame is that you should wait for somebody to buy something. But I guess in my mind, if I have an idea for it that I think it might sell a little bit faster, yep, I'm gonna bring it home and redo it. And yep, this is what it looked like. So I hope you enjoyed our booth tour. I hope you enjoyed our quick flips. And I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. So thanks for watching today's video, guys, and for always, as always, thank you for being part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. Bye.